Hello and welcome to another video with Aruba SD-WAN. Today we talk about how you upgrade your Aruba SD-WAN appliances. In this video we talk about a single appliance upgrade process and then we followed by where I show how the upgrade process is um, kind of treat HHA sites, HHA appliances differently versus where uh, it treats the traditional HHA appliances differently. So let's get on with it. SD1 appliance upgrade is unbelievably easy. You can pick your appliance that you want to upgrade. You can go in the search menu, type in upgrade, and it is going to give you all these options. Let's pick the upgrade appliances. On the left pane, you have all possible um, images that are available. And uh, I want to upgrade to 907 because the current target appliance pane on the right shows my slot 1 905 and it is currently active so the process would be once you select your image that you want to upgrade to there is a validation that happens and it lets you know your appliance whether it is compatible or not in my case this is compatible so now i can proceed with the upgrade i have three options down below i can install and reboot which entails um, install the new image in an inactive partition there's two partitions slot 0 and slot 1 and in this case my Chicago appliance slot 1 is active and slot 2 is inactive so sorry slot 0 is inactive this 907 will be installed into slot 0 and once the installation is complete it is going to switch the partition make slot 0 active and it will reboot that appliance all of this process is done through the orchestrator itself now the second option install and segment set next boot partition does the same thing it uh, install the appliance the new version software ecos into the inactive partition in my case slot zero and then it just sets the partition as active it does not however proceed with the reboot you know, some cases you don't want to um, make this change and reboot the appliance but you want to prep everything right so uh, you do these to multiple of your sites and then you have a scheduled downtime window that you can proceed with the reboot realize that in that aspect your partition would be set uh, to uh, go on to slot zero with the next reboot whether you do it manually or a power outage does it for you the third option is install only, which in turn install the new ECOS software that you selected uh, on the inactive partition, and that's it. It doesn't do anything else. You do have to, however, set this manually active and reboot this appliance for the new ECOS version to take effect. So, so I'm going to proceed with the install only. The reason just to show you later on how to set a um, partition active and reboot right these two option does that all um, so in order to show you I need to have a, a partition that is installed with the newer version imagine Chicago has only got 905 in an active and 833 on the inactive so let's proceed with that one and I'm going to fast forward this All right, as you can see, the process succeeded. It doesn't do anything else. Let's uh, close this window, go over to the appliance manager. I wanted to just show you that the um, inactive partition will have the 907 version where the active partition would only have the 905. Um, so here you go, we go to maintenance and software upgrade. This is the appliance manager. Um, using the orchestrator, I'm logged into this appliance. And here you can see that 907 installed on the inactive and we have um, so the process of switching and making it active would be to just click on switch partition 
where you can see that it's going to set next boot set to yes and and this is it 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 saves this configuration and you can simply reboot from here let's go ahead and reboot before that i want to show you this chicago only running 905 on this you just hover over this appliance and you can see the version 905 let's proceed with the reboot and we'll rejoin when it reloaded back okay okay so the reboot succeeded and we can see that the active partition has the 907 and is already been booted so if i go to orchestrator i'm gonna uh, hover over my edge um, the chicago appliance and now you can see the version is 907 so simple right but this upgrade process kind of um, gets a little bit of tricky when it comes to your high available sites. Uh, there's two design for uh, Aruba SD-WAN high availability. One called the traditional HA and we have Edge HA. Uh, the, the significance of the sign here uh, with the two lines with HA uh, tells you that this um, these two appliances are on edge HA and here you do not have it but you have two appliances in the site that kind of tells you they are in a traditional HA. Let's not talk about the high available designs but simply make this video regarding upgrading appliances. Um, Orchestrator, when you use that upgrade appliance process, it treats the Edge HA sites differently. Uh, it detects Edge HA and it only upgrades one appliance at a time so your site doesn't go down completely. Whereas traditional HA is not treated the same way. Individual appliance would be upgrading all at once if you pick install and reboot and the site will be down. We usually design traditional HA for hub sites or data centers so you have to be careful careful upgrading those sites, a uh, little bit of manual process where you uh, can install both of them but don't pick the install and reboot. You manually reboot one appliance at a time so your site doesn't go down totally for a moment of time. Let me demonstrate that. Alright, so I'm going to use two windows to demonstrate this. Uh, on the left side, I'm going to have Atlanta selected. On the right, um, Orchestrator, I'm going to have uh, Nashville HQ selected. Let's proceed with the upgrade appliance. And here I'm going to do the same. All right, go on the, on the right pane you have, on the right window you have Nashville, which is traditional. On the left you have Atlanta on the uh, better edge chain. We proceed and again, my goal would be to go with uh, the next available one. Uh, let's pick um, another one, 913 or 908, yes, why not? Uh, 908, all right, 9.0.8. All right, here we go. Okay, we have 9.0.8. They're all compatible. I'm going to hit upgrade. Install reboot selected for both. And you will see that how these both sites go down. Um, but for HHA, one site will go at, one, at, at a time. And for traditional HHA, which is this window on the right side, it's going to just go all at once. There we go. All right, here you can see the left side of the window. We have uh, high edge HA sites where uh, ACV2 is being upgraded, where ACV1 is um, not going through the upgrade process right now. But on the right side, you can see that both goes through the process at once, hitting them both at once. So when they both reboot, you will see the Nashville site will go down. On the left side you can see ECV2 will proceed with the upgrade when it is completely done, came back, stabilized um, and then the ECV1 will then proceed with the upgrade.
So here on the left side, we have a server that is behind these HHA um, appliances. The left side, you can see that uh, it's reaching out to another site, 1013, which is my Chicago. And on the right side, Nashville side, where you can see both of them are going through the reboot and it's a literal down for the old Nashville headquarters. Traditional HA, traditional HA sites are treated um, as an individual appliance during the upgrade process, so they go down both. But on the left wing, you can see HA is being coordinated and upgrades happening while the site is still active, passing traffic to another SD1 site. Um, ECV2 Nash on the right is done with the upgrade, but the site is still not active. And because ECV1 Nash is the active VRRP member. Anyways, let's not go into deep the process. Just wanted to show that AJHA uh, treats the upgrade process separately than the traditional HA sites. I hope this uh, made sense. If you have any questions, let me know. I would be happy to answer them. You can see that. Um, Atlanta AJHA site did not go down, whereas Nashville traditional site uh, has gone down. And finally, uh, it's um, waiting for um, the Nashville Edge um, Connect 1 to come back. And when the sync process completes, then um, the traffic will start passing. I hope this video was very informative. If you learned something, if I fulfill any of the missing gap, let me know. I would really appreciate that. Wait for another video if I find a specific topic that is tricky but helpful and I will make that video for them. If you have anything in mind regarding SD-WAN um, deployment, let me know and I'll try to make a video as well. But until then, thank you for visiting my YouTube channel and please subscribe if you like it and uh, I thank you. Take care. See you then.